Hey friends, Coach Shelby and Coach Christine, we are excited to have you join us for Time for Brunch Quick Bites Edition, where you already know you can grab your miles with a side of smiles, take them on the run midday, in the afternoon, or even a late night snack attack. But it's time. We're going to have some fun, get moving and grooving, so lace up those shoes, put a smile on your face, and let's vlog some miles, everybody. Before we chase these speedy miles, let's get in a few dynamic movements. You know, shake off the dust, shake out the booty, whatever you've got, let's drop it like it's hot. Going right in to our stretches and our squats in three, two, and one. Again, I love a squat, especially if you've been sitting all day. I feel like it's a great exercise to really take a moment and feel your body, feeling those hips. You can even do a sumo squat here if you feel like you need to open up your hips a little bit more, especially if you have been sitting all day. I do them, I love them, and trust me, I will not stop until everybody is converted to squat loving goodness. Let's go ahead and transition into our jumping jacks in three, two, and one. Doing that full body movement, clapping your hands at the top, as you bring your feet back together, engage those glutes. True story, I actually had somebody text me the other day who is not a runner, but a avid listener who said that they wanted me to know they engage their glutes every single time they listen to me tell them that. So Dave, if you are listening, squeeze those glutes because we're about to transition on over in three, two, and one. Gonna bring it in for some butt kicks gonna bring those heels up to the glutes it's all about the booty starting off slow here gradually picking up the speed can even engage your upper body with this and kind of do a little bit of that running arm motion working with our feet and our legs versus crossing our body because speed does help when it's coming from the upper body as well as the lower body that is your food for thought of the day as i put you into our walking warm-up in three, two, and one. Or you can always jog it out. Coach Christine, what are you feeling today? Walking or jogging? I think I would do jogging today because we're going to get into speedy intervals. It's going to be short. It's going to be quick. And I want to maximize the time that we've got together. So I think that's what I'm feeling. What about you, Coach? Uh, I'm probably going to do for a jog as well. I'm feeling like I'm already kind of warmed up. I've had my day and I'm going to... I'm going to put a little extra, what is it, uh, extra picante? No, picante is just hot, isn't it? <laughs> hey, that's exactly right. We're going to put a little spice into this. So a little picante works from start to finish. So friends, we're here in this light jog or walk. And then we're going to have four segments today, four minutes of a harder effort. Maybe this is more of a tempo push for you on that RPE scale, about a six to seven. If you're feeling a little spicier, you want to take it up to an eight. I'm not going to hold you back. I don't think Coach Shelby's going to hold you back. And then you're going to have two minute recoveries so that you can make that your own. You can pull back into an active recovery walk. You can pull back into a light jog, whatever you need today, or you could always flip it. You could do those four minutes at a walk and two minutes at a harder effort, kind of just really customizing this to what you need. As long as you have a noticeable pace change between those segments, then you should, you sh you're definitely following along. And if you want to do whatever you want to do, we ain't holding you back from that either. I'm all about <laughs> kind of making it work for yourself. I love a little speedy intervals. I think it's a little fun to add in and a little four minute with a two minute ratio sounds perfect to me. How about you coach? I just love the fact that we named the podcast Brunch and we literally are giving a buffet. Like you can have a little bit of this, you could have a little bit of that. You can skip the spice or you can just really embrace and, and see what that threshold level is. Oh my gosh, you're <laughs> absolutely right. It's all about empowering whomever is running along, walking along, moving and shaking. Movers and shakers of the world unite, do what you need to do to make sure that you feel good in this quick bite segment. But today, you know what we're going to talk about, Coach, because this always makes me feel good, is National Library Shelfie Day. That's right, friends. We're going to talk a little bit about running books in honor of Library Shelfie Day, which is traditionally celebrated on the fourth Wednesday in January, and it offers a unique opportunity for book lovers. And Coach, I am definitely a book lover. <laughs> I must say, I'm like, I don't think I've seen your face light up with this much oh excitement my gosh, I'm so since excited. maybe we tried getting shoes. <laughs> to happen. 
<laughs> Shufi maybe didn't happen. We haven't seen that yet hit the national holiday list, but it will eventually. <laughs> Until then, we're going to celebrate fully with Library Shelfie Day. It does have an actual hashtag. It's in episode notes. I would love you to, as you're rolling through here, prepare mentally. Maybe when you get home and you've recovered, maybe you're going to dust off some of your favorite running books and you're going to take a shelfie and recommend it to us. Please also tag us at Time for Brunch Podcast. With that, friends, let's get ready for a little bit of spice pushing into a harder effort in three, two, and one. And coach, right out of the gate, because our friends are taking it nice, tall, relaxed, and light on their feet into their first four-minute harder effort segment, I think we should break out our favorite inspirational books. So do you want to tell me maybe what you like the most? So right now, the pickup of this pickup, huh, see what I did there. And I feel like Christine's like waiting, bated breath. Like she's talking about books, guys. Like I brought her to the book oh, side. I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's Good for a Girl by Lauren Fleshman. And if you've heard that name before, no, you are not hallucinating. You have. She is, of course, a now retired elite, which, you know, I love my elite. You do love your elites. I do. And she, she's just come on so strong. And even the title grabbed me, Good for a Girl. Because how many times have we heard that? Like, oh, you're really good for a girl. Or the dreaded, you're really good for a jogger. I love it. It's she's always there. It where it's good for a girl, a woman running in a man's world. Because, of course, then I think the James Brown song um, and that one of my favorite songs. It's uh, I have not read this book yet. It is on my list. I will likely be listening or consuming it in an audiobook for portion. Um, and I cannot wait. I am so excited about it. So I, I've read the reviews, though. And right out of the gate, it's saying that this is one of the hottest best books to hit the the sh- library shelfy if you will well and i i love lauren fleshman because she was part of the takedown that surrounded nike and just giving her voice to it along with the likes of allison felix and and just breaking down those barriers and even with her work with wazelle trying to be more size inclusive, gender inclusive, race inclusive, and embodying that. I think this is just another notch in that belt of breaking down and kind of peeling back that label again of what it means to be a female runner in a stereotypically very male dominated sport. I mean, Coach, you, I am. I can't tell you how excited I am about this book. So I'm excited for this entire episode. Hence why I <laughs> skipped the warm up walk, went right into a jog because I just have an extra pep in my step. And I love inspirational running books are my absolute jam. I mean, we're going to cover a few different categories here for this quick bites, but out of the gate inspiration. So friends, while you are rocking and rolling your three minutes in, we have 60 more seconds into this push. Keep moving, keep grooving, getting that little extra pep in your step, feeling good. Maybe you're feeling like an elite. I'm going to go into my inspirational book of choice for this particular episode and it's Out and Back, A Runner's Story of Survival Against All Odds. Now, not necessarily a specific elite per se, world-class ultra runner in her story of kind of what happens when, well, when life doesn't go according to plan and her falling during a race, 150 feet, fracturing her back and breaking ribs, feet, legs, arms, the whole, I mean, she was unfortunately broken entirely and having to work really hard at coming back from that. And I think that as we are rolling through here, we see a lot of setbacks sometimes in our lives and we wonder how we're going to come back and reading about her, not only coming back, but really fighting for it every step of the way. It just, it touched me and Uh, I I get so emotional about it. So again, one of those really great things and why I love books so much. Friends, let's pull it back into our recovery in three, two, and one. So I think that's really what it is. It kind of gives you a little glimpse and it makes your world both larger and more full of vibrancy all at the same time when you peer into the pages of these books. 
Well, and it allows you really to peer into the individual author's soul. And if I'm not mistaken, both of these books are written by them. There weren't ghost writers, which I have nothing against ghost writers, but there is something to be said. And even in one of the, the blurbs I saw about Lauren Fleshman's book, it says it's a joyful letter to the running life, a raw personal narrative of growth, change, and a vital call to reimagine sports for young women. How does that not grab you? Oh. Like right there, I'm like, let's let's smash the patriarchy like, in a good way. I love my guys too, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying it's the, the bad part of the patriarchy. It is without a shadow of a doubt. And what I think, as you mentioned, I love ghostwriters as well. I'm not gonna give them any hate or I understand why people do need to employ them just for that extra little bit of panache or polish whenever they're writing. But yes, both these books were written by these individuals that experience these things. And I don't think that that could really be captured except from that individual. Not only that, but if you guys are rolling through here and you're thinking, I want to add something to my audio book um, list, both of these are also narrated by the authors, which I think, again, sometimes can be a little bit of a twofold. I've heard some authors that maybe don't necessarily translate as well when they're reading the book, but I think these particular books are going to be phenomenal since they are so passionately um, written and expressed by the individuals. So friends with that, go ahead and shake it out a little bit. We're taking into our second speedy interval, another four minute segment. Where we're going to turn the page, if you will, <laughs> into another category. Let's take it up in five, four, three, two, and one. Coach, I think the next one on the list is maybe not something that every runner will want to add to their shelfies um, or add to their bookshelves, but it is something that I, I know we get this question quite frequently. I think I've just tackled this question maybe two or three times in the past couple of weeks, which what technical books about running would you recommend? So I'm going to say right out of the gate, and I have it literally right next to me because I consider it the runner's Bible. I don't think that anybody necessarily, if you are um, a casual runner or you're working with a coach, I don't necessarily think that you have to have this detailed of a book because I, I think it's written, well, I know it's written by um, Dr. Tim Noakes, an actual MD, and I'm going through it right now just to tell you the page count. I think it's 900. <laughs> it's like 900 pages. The index is about 20 pages long in of itself. I don't know that anyone necessarily needs this, nor will I lie and say that I've read it cover to cover. I use this as a reference book. So whenever I need to dig a little deeper, this is the book that I will turn to. Maybe if I get stuck on a deserted island and I just have just a few books available to me, and this is one of them, I'll read it cover to cover, but I don't see myself doing that anytime soon. Maybe you should do that on the flight to Tokyo. You know, just a little light reading before you go run a marathon. That's not going to get all in yeah. your mental game anyway. Who, who needs a sleeping aid when you could just read 900 some pages? I mean, super amazing books. Like the chapters that I've referenced, the um, paragraphs that I've, that I've read about. Absolutely, you cannot get more detailed than this from anywhere from um, women's athletes with menstruation and our cycles to just the technical with our form, turnover, physiology, all sorts of things. Even w talking about like the mental training and overtraining and cumulative fatigue, absolutely phenomenal book, absolutely recommend it. I do believe that if you are a young coach, a burgeoning coach, or wanting to take your running to a little bit of a next level and you want to know why, this is a great book to add to your bookshelf. What about you, coach? <laughs> I just, I don't know if I'm ever going to get over in this quick fight, the excitement, like how I talk about music and like I make my puns and funnies about music. I feel like you turning the page, like you got so much joy out of it. And I love, I, do. I love, I love I the do. smile. You're going to have to take a screenshot of this. First and foremost, I want to let everybody know the only thing that I had difficulty with was like, how are we going to do this for a quick bite? And I'll talk more about that a little bit later, but for here, for now, I, I definitely don't want you to, to not have your time to shine since we have about a minute and 15 seconds before our next recovery. What's your technical I don't. Book? I don't think this one's going to surprise anybody because I feel like just how we say it depends or uh, I love that, this is the next thing out of our mouth. So the next book on the bookshelf is 8020 Running by Matt Fitzgerald, which is exactly what we talk about all day, every day. The 80-20 rule. 
the official long titles run stronger and race faster by training slower. Meaning again, taking your easy miles 80% of the time, the 20% you're going to bump it up and do all of that speed work, your long runs, etc. And it goes through the science of how it'll become more pleasant, less straining, you'll have less fatigue. Everything we preach, hello, he wrote a book about it. I mean, and can I just give, I, can I like fangirl ahead. about Matt Fitzgerald for a little bit too? Matt Fitzgerald, one of the premier running authors that we will ever find. He's dug deep into all sorts of facets from the psychology with How Bad Do You Want It? One of my favorite books to more of the physiological adaptations of running, you know, run slow to speed or to run fast, kind of with 80-20. Absolutely amazing author. Definitely. We're going to pull back into recovery so we can fangirl a little bit more in three, two, and one. Oh my goodness, friends. As coach said, this is definitely my jam. <laughs> so I can't tell you how excited I am about National Library Shelfie Day. So please do me a favor when you get home. It doesn't have to be a running book, but maybe something that just makes you smile. One of your favorite books, take that Shelfie and share it with us at Time for Brunch podcast. But yes, 8020 is I think one of the books that we probably reference the most in every aspect of coaching, including um, a lot of how we program for our training group that we currently are working with and how we'll likely be working with our next training group as well. I will say Matt Fitzgerald. I always remember his name because he has a book, which I've not read yet. It's called the comeback quotation. Um, but or quotations. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Quotient. It's okay. Yeah. It's a really good book. Yeah. I haven't read it yet, but it has Molly Seidel on the cover. And if there's one thing we've established, you love books. And I do love me some elites. (laughs) Well, there's tons of books about elite, so it's perfect. It's like a peanut butter and strawberry jelly sandwich, my friend. Um, Yes, that's one of... You don't like strawberry jelly? I don't like jelly. You don't... Wait. I I eat peanut butter (laughs) sandwiches. I don't eat peanut butter and jellies. Okay, so do you not have peanut butter and banana sandwiches? I usually have like separate. I don't smash it together like an animal. Do you not... Wait... (laughs) <laughs> peanut butter was meant to like it's not supposed to be by itself peanut butter is better with its friends it's better with chocolate Bite it's me. better with strawberries <laughs> it's better with every aspect peanut butter no. needs its friends don't separate it okay no <laughs> well, sorry friends, tangent i'm sorry that you guys are having to hear this very sad commentary about the fact that she doesn't allow her peanut butter to hang out with jelly and it's okay <laughs> because you're going to take it into your next segment we're also about the halfway point friends so if you need to get out and back turn yourself around a little bit right here coach would say do the hokey pokey but definitely shake it out as we go into our next segment in three two and one four minutes here to pick up that pace nice and easy again really engaging your core opening up that chest and using those arms because now we're going to talk all about the humorous bone a little funny bone with the funny category next <laughs> Really, I like really how bad I'm, pun. I'm channeling. I'm channeling all the spiciness. I'm sharing it with every single runner right now. Just oh, no. know that yes, I won't fight about much, but I will fight about peanut butter. Apparently. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I'm. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight you on it. But I'm just simply saying we're. We are taking our next categories of books into our. Some of the books that we've read that are funny that we love. Now, this is another category that's hard to narrow it down. I wanted to try to specifically come up with one that I haven't shared in previous episodes. And I just finished listening to this one and it made me grin like from start to finish when I was listening to it on my run to where I think people could not help but to actually smile. And that's Jesse Itzler's Living with a Seal. And if you guys don't know who Jesse Itzler is, he is the significant other of the one, the only Spanx CEO. And I mean, how can you not love somebody who is married to a strong, powerful woman that gave us that wonderful, wonderful under apparel called Spanx? So (laughs) he's pretty amazing in his own right as a business person. She's pretty amazing in her own right as a business person. Um, And I think that that's what I love about this book is that it combines fitness Uh, with running and a little bit of, he kind of peels back the veil of some of the grittiness and things that he's had to do to persevere in the business world. So for me, it was quite literally a peanut butter and strawberry jelly and banana sandwich. It was like everything in a bag of chips. 
So definitely my favorite. And of course, friends, we have a blog post that we will reference in the episode notes. You guys can check these all out, add them to your, to your queue, to your wish list. Um, I feel like I stole the, I mean, I can't not talk about books and not, and not, This episode is yours to steal. I mean, let's be honest. I don't think one person rolling around right now is thinking that (laughs) I'm going to even have a a iota of the content that you are coming out Uh, here with. But I I do think I've shared this one on the show before. But as soon as we put funny books, this was the one I went to. And I probably will reread it before I run the New York City Marathon. But it's How to Lose a Marathon. Um... And it's by Joel Cohen, who I don't know if he still is, but he was a writer on The Simpsons. And it talks about how he decided to run the New York City Marathon and how he lost in an epic fashion. (laughs) And it's so hilarious to me because he's he is so self-deprecating and I do love self-deprecating humor. I can't help it. Mm -hmm. Um, And he even takes you through the race. And even just for that portion of the book alone, going through the different boroughs and seeing what he experienced throughout and his takeaways. I mean, if you're gonna lose a marathon, he basically wrote the script of how to do it. I feel like there's another book that I, I'm not gonna reference in this one, but it sounds like from when I'm reading the reviews about this specific book, it sounds very similar to me. And the reviews in of itself are hilarious. So if this says anything about the actual contents of the book, then it's got to be great. One review specifically says, even if you don't run at all, let alone competitively, this is a great read with plenty of wit and humor. Okay, that one's not that funny. But this other person, individual goes into saying, this book contains great affirmations of how much of a loser I am. I'm just like, okay. (laughs) A little bit of touch of irony there. Um, Definitely funny. Friends, let's pull it back in three, two, and one. We're in our recovery. Now, this is our third set. We have just one more category left, one more interval. So coach, I'm going to ask you, what would you do here to kind of hype yourself up for our last speed interval where people are going to push in for four minutes into either a strong walk or their tempo pace or wherever they they want to challenge themselves at? Well, leaning into the book episode that you so beautifully written, wrote, I can't talk again. I barely write, but I can't (laughs) talk either. But think of something that you read, either a fortune cookie or if you read a book or if you're like me and still get the newspaper, because I mean, I love a printed newspaper. Think of something that you read that fired you up and harness that, whether it was that feel good story about a charity or a local nonprofit doing great work, or if you're a sports person reading about your favorite football team getting into the playoffs or how it was a bad call by the refs, whatever it is, use it, hone in on it and bring it as fuel to get you through. Oh, I love this. So we're taking a little bit of extra pep in our step, which actually, friends, as I explain to you the next category, it may give you a little bit of extra fuel as well, both of the book recommendations that we have for you. So I'm going to suggest at this point, if you are back into your active recovery, where you really just take account of your posture. So thinking tall, maybe even envisioning a really strong finish in your head as we push into it in about 30 seconds here. And I, I mean, coach, you know, Know how excited I am about this. I can't wait to talk about this last category as well. Um, this is my favorite. Is it? This is. This is my favorite. Okay. I mean, I have to say, okay, well, I'm not going to say anything more. I'm not going to give it away. You guys will have to hear about it in the next segment, which we're going to have in 10 seconds. So again, nice and tall, maybe even putting a little extra pep in your step here as we push in three, two, and one, four minutes on the clock. You got this, my friends. Maybe this is the fastest interval of your entire day. As we continue to push on through here, I feel like it's your favorite. So you go out of the gate, coach. I was going to say, I'm like, I'm stealing your thunder. This is my time. This is, I don't know how many books I've actually pre-ordered in my lifetime. The count is not that high. I will say this. As soon as this book was announced, I brought my happy butt to Amazon and I hit pre-order. And then I think and if you I contacted me so, about it. I'm pretty positive. Like It was like I an did. immediate, like, we have to read this book. So this next category, friends, is that 2023 is definitely coming out of the gate 
really hot and strong and heavy, especially in the running book category list. So these books are dropping in 2023 and they are already on our pre-order list and we are anxiously awaiting their arrival at our front door so that we can read them from cover to cover. So coach, this book that you, not only did you order it, but you sent me a message immediately about it. Go ahead and share it with our friends that are rolling through here. I'm so excited. I really hope this is going to be on audiobook and I hope that the author actually does. It is definitely on audiobook. I know that for a fact. Okay, good. You're up on my thing, but it is choosing to run by none other than the fabulous Des Linden. I love Des Linden. I have said it before, the 2018 Boston Marathon saved me during COVID. It was literally what I watched to get myself through the mental struggle of not being able to be, you know, around people in my household when I had COVID. And I just love Des Linden. She's so aloof, but she's so funny. And no one gives her credit of how funny she is. And of all the stuff that's been written about her and everything that we've come to know about Des Linden is now going to be in a book form. I'm going to read a book, Christine. I'm a real person. <laughs> oh, you have read books, my friend. This one so. just may be a little bit meatier than the other ones. So I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Des Linden as well. I'm not as like ultra elite as you are in terms of like fangirling over the elites, but I think that she does have a very down to earth uh, character that I love about her. I love her, her grittiness. I love her dedication. And without a doubt, this book is also on my must read list. Cannot wait until it hits the front door. And friends, as of right now, if you pre-order this, it is releasing on April 4th. So this is the time to kind of start really looking forward to spring, especially if you guys are starting to consider a summer marathon training cycle. I think there's nothing better than setting yourself up for success with getting your mind into the game. And this is the kind of book that'll do that. But a little something for everybody. I cannot wait until this book releases. I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer for this book, but I'm a huge fan of this specific runner. Follow him on Instagram. Love his story, love his philosophy, love what takes him, um, I guess, out of the realm of what we would typically edify as a runner. And he actually celebrates exactly who he is in his body right now. And that is the Slow AF Run Club, the ultimate guide for anyone who wants to run by Martinus Evans. And first of all, I love his logo. It's like a turtle and a peanut butter. He's got cool, like, custom hat. I love his, I love his swag. I just love everything about him. Plus he just exudes joy. But what I love the most about him was that his story of how he came to run was that his doctor said, you either lose weight or you die. And he said that right then and there, he decided, okay, I'm I'm going to make a conscious decision to run a marathon, but not necessarily in a way of altering his body, but just being the healthiest he can be in his body. So he says that he gets better sleep, stronger muscles, bones, better cardiovascular and mental health. He's got his community that he loves so very much that he pours into and pours into him. Um, But it wasn't about changing his body. It was just changing, like leveling up his health and and his care for himself. Friends, let's go ahead and pull back in three, two, and one. I did wax poetic because I love these books. So you've got an extra 30 seconds. You're welcome. (laughs) So friends, we're not going to pull it back. This is just going to be about two minutes and 30 seconds of an active recovery for us to cool it down a little bit and start talking about what you can expect for this Saturday. Because as you can tell, this was incredibly hard for us to wrap up into a quick bite. We did not want to miss the opportunity of pushing this out there with Library Shelfie Day, but we have a full on brunch that's going to be dedicated to books and movies because of course, Coach Shelby's going to give us a lot of movie recommendations. I can't help it, okay? I can't let you steal all the thunder now, shall I? You get books, I get movies, and together we have a cozy night at home. Exactly. So friends, if you want a little bit more inspiration, maybe some other things to put into your wish list or your queue, then join us this brunch as we are tackling movies and books, some of our favorites to run by, to get motivated by, to maybe learn from, and of course 
to put that little extra pep in our step as we continue to train strong for whatever it is that we want for ourselves as our next endeavors. And with that, you're pulling it back a little bit more. You're starting to feel that little extra sparkle, that magic from a really good, strong effort here. And knowing that it's good for you at this point to start thinking about maybe making some notes about how many books you want to buy or which one you're going to go <laughs> find and take a shelfie with. And again, tagging us on Instagram or posting it in our Facebook community page. And of course, we have all those links waiting for you over on our website in the blog. With that, friends, we want to go ahead and say that it's absolutely amazing work. We are so great, grateful to have you getting in this quick bite with us. And as you go through the rest of your day, we want you to make sure that not only do you give yourself a high five, but that you make sure to rehydrate and refuel. I'm going to suggest that you refuel with peanut butter and jelly. But if you decide that you just want peanut butter, that's fine too. Then join us again with Time for Brunch Long Run Edition this Saturday. Of course, as I mentioned, books and movies, all running related recommendations. Or come back more for midweek quick bites. Regardless of when or where, we're going to be serving up more miles with a side of smiles.